Hey guys, Thomas from Team Sakurazo here, coming at you guys with another Yu-Gi-Oh! Market Watch. And I want to thank you guys for the last Market Watch. That hit over a thousand views, which is awesome. And not only did we get a bunch of likes, but we got a lot of people recommending cards. And remember, if you guys want to alert me of any buyouts or you want my opinions on any cards, let me know in the comment section below and I'll go over the next Market Watch. So I want to say thank you guys for that. Can this video also hit a thousand views? And can we hit 70 likes? That would be awesome. Uh, if you're buying any cards off TCG Player, please use my affiliate link down in the description below. Helps out the channel to no additional cost. So you consider being a YouTube channel member. And we're just going to get right into it. So, Soul Servant, Legendary Duelist Magical Hero here, uh, is still crazy. First said start at 65, but if you don't want to trust a seller with only 208 sales, which is understandable, first sets really start at about 75 here, 100? So, yeah, this card's kind of going crazy. I mean, if you've if you've read it, th there's a reason why I told people to pick this up instead of some of the other cards in Legendary Duelist Magical Hero when they first came out. This card was 12 not even $12. I think it was $7, $8 at first. That's when I got my, and then they went up to $12. Uh, let's go. You can draw cards equal to number of Paladin monsters, Dark Magicians, and or... Dark Magician Girls with different names on the field and in the graveyards. This, this card just lets you draw nuts, right? This, The amount of plus you go off this card is so nuts that if it was at any point generic somehow, that deck would be busted. So, I completely understand why this card is as much money as it is. If you have this card, it will eventually get reprinted. But I think this is kind of going to be one of the newer Dark Magician cards that holds a lot of value. But if you have any spares... Or, if you bought them just for a collection, you're looking at this price and you're like, I like the card, but I never imagined it being about, you know, $75. Uh, you could sell them. You're, you made a ton of money. I mean, you bought an $8 card or a $12 card and you sold it for $75. So, that's a lot of profit, especially if you got a play set. So, if you want to sell now, just wait for a reprint. Eh, I don't blame you too much. Rainbow Dragon from the 2007 Collector Tin. Now, I ended up finding one of these in bulk. Uh, some bulk I got recently, and I was like, huh, you know, how much is this worth? Uh, it was about a week or two ago, and even the heavy plates are like $7 here, right? And I think it was heavily played, or mod plays, so $8, that's not too bad. However, once you go to the lightly plates, right, you start seeing about $10 here, going up to about 12 13 very quickly. Uh, however, for the near mints, uh, eighteen dollars going up to nineteen, going up to twenty. And by the way, this is not the the mod play version. Don't worry, I had a few of these. But yeah, once this copy is gone and these two copies are gone, and basically these four, they go up to thirty five each, right? Then forty nine. So I'm not too sure why this card has been going up recently, but it is a collector card. The tin is about fifteen years old at this point. Uh, I'm going to go with more closer to like 14, 14 and a half though, because let's be real, it's only like the first 7, 8 days of 2022, which hopefully you guys are having a good new year. Mine has been uh, awkward to say the least, uh, just been dealing with a lot of issues. <coughs> Sorry about that guys, I'm still a little bit sick, so hopefully you don't mind a little coughing here and there. Uh, the Ghost Rift from Tactical Evolution though, uh, these are about... For unlimited lightly plays are about two hundred off the rim. Uh near mints are gonna run you about two twenty, right, from blazing cards. Not too bad. Uh first editions though. Uh mod for about two fifty three, right or two thirty five, actually, mind you. I would rather have a first set mod play of this than a lightly played unlimited, by the way. So if you're thinking about grabbing this, spend the extra thirty, get the first set print. And hey, if it's not that bad, maybe it's first and light play. You got, you kind of got a steal over there. But first and light plays, besides that, are almost five hundred dollars here. Uh, quite a lot of money here. Uh, everyone's just trying to undercut each other by like a penny here for a four hundred something dollar card. That's just so nuts to me. Like at least lower it by a dollar. Like come on, guys. Uh, near mints. Uh, we got over here five hundred dollars with pictures. We're actually gonna take a look at this. Uh. It might be a little scratched up, but the card itself, very beautiful. I, I would actually buy this one because you know exactly what you're getting here. Gorgeous. Uh, and then Tactical Evolution versions. Now, I only really want to mess with the first editions of these. 
But first editions are about, mob plates are about $50 here. Lightly plates are about 71 Okay, not too bad. Uh, near mints are about 125 from Harvio. But then 137 but those guys have less than 400 sales put together. So, 150 is your total for a first ad near mint. I would just grab the lightly plates personally, if anything. But maybe see if you can get a deal with this. I mean, it's an old first and seek urge. It's a ritual printing. You know, it's not a bad version to have overall. Sylvan Hermitry. Now, Sylvan's got support finally. And I made a video a long time ago called 5... Uh, archetypes that need a link monster and this was actually up there and this was my personal favorite because I really love Sylvans and uh, a team member might also love Sylvans a lot right we have a lot of memories about this deck uh, and it's just it was so so fun right probably one of the most fun plant decks ever and I'm saying someone that as someone who loves plant synchro all that and this doesn't really synchro summon much I mean you, you do play the splore and the glow up bulb and all that but you go into, like, very weird shenanigans with it. But uh, Hermitries, which I told you guys, this is a very cheap archetype that could get support at any minute here. Uh, Lightly Play Unlimited are 15 First Editions are $17. Uh, quite a bit of money for Sylvan Hermitry. Uh, Aurea, the High Arbiter here, uh, $265, $4. All right, well, how much are First Editions here? Uh, $8 for Lightly Play. Near Mints are 8 bucks here. Going up... Quickly up to ten dollars. If you guys don't know what this card does, uh, basically, uh, you get to return cards from the field to the hand, uh, ex and it doesn't target, which is really nice. <coughs> and you get excavation. It's like a mini tiramisu. Not as good though. Marshall leaves here are about uh five dollars uh, for first and light play. About seven for near mint. Uh, quite a bit of money for this. And by the way, a lot of the Sylvan cards have 2014 Syndrome. And if you guys don't know what that is, it's when the, the card comes in 2014, uh, it gets reprinted in the tins, and then never sees any other type of printing to this day, right? 2014-2015 uh, did all, that a lot with cards. So a lot of cards from that era only have two pranks. $3 for Megan's pack, though. It was Sylvan Charity, uh, 4 bucks. First Eds are about... Not unlimited here. First editions are... Oh, well, you got mob play here, but that with that $3 shipping, that's ugly. Four fifty going up to $5. Not too bad here. Uh, Sylvan Sekukuya. Uh, I, I understand why this one's not as good as it used to be, but like back in the day. But uh, two for lightly played here. Actually, $2 for a lightly played. Then they go up to $9 for a near man. You can flip that. That's actually really good. Uh... Royal Oppression. Now, we're getting older formats, right? Like, we're getting the Master Duel format. Edison's picking up a little bit. Um, I don't know if this... I forgot if this was legal in Edison. No, 99%. I don't know why I thought that this was legal in Edison. Disregard that comment. I don't know why I'm thinking that. But, I told people to grab the dual terminal versions if they could. Uh, before it's too late. Well, you got Lightly Play here for 11, right? Now, last time I looked at this card, only a few weeks ago, Near Mints were about 13, 12, 13. Now they're $16, but they only have one page left, right? So we're going to quickly go through this, right? If you don't have your DT Royal Oppression, grab this as soon as you can. Evil Hero Infernal Prodigy. Now, if you control the monsters, special summon this card uh, uh, from your hand in face of attack position. If you tribute this card, tribute summon an elemental hero, destiny hero, evil hero monster. You draw a card during this turn's end phase, right? So a lot of people are kind of playtesting this with, you know, getting more draws off the DPE engine and all that. Well, you got $10 for a first set lightly played, and that's about it. Now, do not panic. You have other versions here. Uh, you have the rares here for like a uh, dollar or two, but then you kind of have your cleaner commons looking at for like 30 cents here. But they do quickly go up, I guess, but I wouldn't really buy these. I mean, I guess they're 50 cents now, which is cute, but... Dark Magician of Chaos from Gold Series 2008 here. Uh, lightly played are about $34 here. Going up to 50 bucks, which I'm actually quite shocked at. Now, near mints are about $60, going up to 65.73. So, I don't know what to tell you guys, but this is apparently the ver the go-to version for this card. Personally, I like other versions more. I would rather get a Dark Revelation Ultra. In fact, we're going to take a look at this. Uh, the Secret Earth of Legend Collection, we're also going to take a look at those. But, uh, Lightly Plates here are about... 
Ooh, that hurts. Never mind. Okay, you know what? 2008's looking okay now, guys. Uh, <coughs> and again, sorry, guys, for the coughing. I'm still kind of sick here, but I still want to do a video for you guys. Uh, Lightly Plains are 26 here, but first editions are probably going to run some racks here. Uh, first and life plays are $62, going up to 64 Uh, D-Bock is a card where I guess the high rarity of this just goes crazy, crazy. I would rather have the secret rares, but that's just me. The gold rares look okay. It just depends on how you feel. Mirror Force from 2008 here. Now, I'm shocked this is worth this much. Lightly plates are $28. Near mints are about 42 So... Yeah, if you have this version, because a lot of players, their Mirror Forces are kind of around the time they used to play. And I know a lot of people who have these are just sitting on $30, $40. If you don't have as much attachment to this card, because Gold Series 2008 was like a really good set. It's just people would rather play other versions. But back when it first came out, it was just such a, a godlike set. So a lot of people have these versions. Grandmaster of the Six Samurai from Strike of Neo. So I ended up picking up one of these for like $30 recently. And I was like, this is worth like a hundred something, because I went I went over it, right? Now, first dead lightly played 135, right? Made it quite a bit of money. The issue is it's near mint, right? So I was like, alright, that's probably, you know, a little bit less here. Two hundred and seventy dollars, right? And when I listed mine personally, it was this was the cheapest copy. I was like, nope. Nobody should be paying that. If you have this. I'll be honest, there's a lot better cards I would rather have for $300. Like, would you rather exchange this, for example, for that first end mod play Ghost, or money towards a first end lightly played of it? I personally would, right? Uh, again, a lot of other great ultimate rares that you could get. Like, you could get a, uh, you know, some ulti psalm judgments, right? You could get a lot, actually. Now, Grandmaster the Six Samurai DTs, on the other hand, right? Uh, these are about 50 cents here. You know, going up to about like a dollar fifty. If you want to grab a couple copies of this, might not be too bad. Yes, it has its gold series, gold rare, the sneak preview, super rare. Uh, then it has a hollow and spirit warriors, right? So this kind of makes this uh virtual relevant. DT is quite quite rare. Getting a couple of these, I think this is a very good penny stonk. Uh, I, I there's good rule for cheaper cards to get quite a few, right? If you want to grab some of these for like a dollar fifty, you want to grab like two play sets or something like that. Uh maybe three. Or in fact, if you really want to just grab three, you're like, eh, I don't know really know. But grab three just to be certain. It's not too bad, right? Definitely has a wall here, but it goes up to about four bucks after those walls are broken. So something concerned Maxi Ultimate Rare. I haven't looked at this in a while. Your light page are gonna be lightly plates are gonna be sitting at six hundred dollars. Near mints are six fifty. Just woohoo. That's all I gotta really fucking say. Uh, Storm of Ragnarok Secret Rares. Now, I only really care about first editions here. Uh, first edition lightly plates are 125, going up to 140. Near mints are 144, uh, but they quickly go up to about 145, all that, 180. So, Storm of Ragnarok Maxis going crazy, crazy. And you guys know the whole drill with Maxis. You know, Ultra Rares are about 26, 27 from Legendary Collection. Ultras, Golds are like 25. Uh, super rares, I have to clear the, uh, the filter here, but these are probably, yeah, like $20, you know, that's, that's awesome, right? Oh, man, I, this card needs a reprint, I don't care if they bring it back, it just does. Do not buy the commons, that's just dumb, do not buy the commons, the commons are a waste of money, if you have commons, sell the commons. Magical Musketeer Max from Battles of Legends Heroes Revenge. Uh, these are now about $2, right? So they went up a little bit. Now, this is a card I believe you should get, like, a couple copies of. Because Magical Muskets are going up in value. Uh, the deck's seeing more play. <clears throat> a lot of the cards haven't seen reprints, but if the deck sees reprints, I don't think they're going to start with Magical Musket Max. I think they're going to start with cards like Cross Domination. Uh, I told people to grab a couple copies of this while you can. I still think this is a great penny stock. Now... Cross domination since it's here, it's since it's here, uh, almost eleven dollars. So, if you have any magical musket cards, they're worth a lot more than you think. I mean, last stands here are about sevens. You know, desperados are about threes here. You know, the docks are about two bucks here, going up to three really. So not too bad. Striker dragon original ultras here, 
Uh, these are about, well, two for unlimited, but first editions are going to be about 250 Go up to three. Yeah, it might not be like bad. If you don't have a copy of this card, I would at least grab a copy so you have it lying around. Dogmatical Ecclesia, the Virtuous. Now, so let me go over Starlet Rare Ecclesias, and I want to go over both, because why not? So this was about $500, and I told people this is a card that will slowly but surely rise up to about six, seven, eight hundred, probably be a thousand within two years. Well, if you spent the five hundred on it, well, now you got your copy at eight hundred dollars. Has been a year since Ecclesia came out. Uh I wanna s I wanna say so, yeah. About about a year ish. Yeah, a year and a few months maybe. Dogmatic Ecclesia, the virtuous original ultra rares are about eight twenty five. Now, sixty five listings is not that much for this card. It quickly goes up to ten dollars. I think original Ultra Ecclesias are the way to go. Uh, secrets are a little less. Now, obviously, Secrets look pretty good. So, if you want to grab and you want to just play for yourself, Secrets, that's good. But I will grab a set of Ultras while you can. Maybe have one play set of Secrets, one play set of Ultras. Now, uh, the Incredible Ecclesia, the Virtuous, uh, Starlet Rares are actually only like $435. Uh, at least the new sellers here are like aiming for a little less, which is really nice. But someone asked me, should you pick up this card? For five hundred dollars. Well, first of all, you can get cheaper for four thirty-five, so you should grab those instead. But second, this card will go up because it is going to be played in the new deck. You know, Branded is going to play this card. Um, a lot of people are speculating between zero and two copies. I've said this before when I've gone over this card. I am, pr I am pretty sure this is going to be played at least at one copy, if not two. So this card could easily go up to seven, eight hundred dollars. But the original secret rares right here at about sixty dollars, this is really good as well, right? They quickly go up to about sixty-five as well. So if you want to grab some for sixty dollars, might not be too bad. Uh, Neos Fusion here. People are finally looking at the Neos engine when it comes to Rainbow Neos and that card being played because that engine is a lot cheaper than DP. And, you know, it was played. It's just people forgot about it. Super Rares are $2. Secret Rares are about, about 4 bucks here, roughly. So not too bad for Secret Neos Fusions. If you kept these at 50 cents, you won. I actually kept a lot of mine because when the Neos Fusion first came out, this was approaching dollar, so I kind of kept these and stashed them away. So a lot of my, you know, dollar cards are now 2 to 4 bucks, which is pretty nice. Fusion Destiny here. <clears throat> so... You got a, this guy's probably offline, that $2 version. Uh, first edition, uh, well, near mints are 21 First and light plays are 22 First and near mints are about $25 for your super rares. Just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, ultra rares are about, about 25 as well, right? Honestly, this is the kind of card where I just, I just pick it up for $10 and I flip it for like 18 19 or like a little higher. And it's just really, really nice, honestly. Uh, to get just a little bit of bank for my buck. Now, I found a, quite a few of these in bulk, which is really nice. Uh, and I feel like a lot of people... I feel like this is a card that's just... It's so exaggerated uh, when it comes to the price. Like, I just think this shouldn't be this much money, but I get why it is. Destiny Hero Phoenix Enforcer here. Uh, first editions are about $90. Not too bad here. Uh, but, you know, once we get to another Verify, to be honest... Uh, it's about $97, kind of going up to about 100 So, DP is that card that's probably going to slowly but surely rise. So, you know, 120 130 That's kind of where I start seeing this card. Black Rose Dragon from Crossroads of Chaos. So, I had this in a 5 card 7 by Trey Byron, which, by the way, you guys love that video. Uh, so, there w I will start that series more often. Uh, now, I want to go over first editions. Now, yeah, first end mod play here for about 12 14 right? Then 20 right? So, these mob plays are actually quite cheap, uh, especially because the first and light plays, when I mentioned that they were 28s, uh, 35 from 207 sales. Again, some people might not like under 1,000 sales. I understand that. Uh, first and light play goes to 40. Once that copy's gone, 100 bucks for your ultras. So, if you want to grab a few of these, might not be a bad idea. Well, whatever's really left, because you really only have two opportunities for a non slobbered version. Uh, Black Rose Dragon Ultimate Rares. Now, Light League Plates are about $60. Uh, Near Mints are about $90, right? I actually have a Light League Plate I picked up recently because they were just very cheap in my opinion. Now, first editions are about 388 over here. Near Mints are 678 going up to $1,000. <clears> now, 
if you want to pick this up, you know, I think paying about 30 if for a lightly played, if you're paying almost $400 when the near mints are about close to 1000 it's not bad overall, but that is a huge chunk. <clears throat> and right now, I just think it's like you have a lot of $400 cards just in this market watch that are a lot better to grab. So you have to make your decision. Well, maybe not a lot better to grab, but they serve different purposes. So just be on the lookout. Black Arrow Dragon Ghost Rare here. Uh, near mints are about, well, lightly plates are about 215 Near mints are about 260 here. First editions, though, someone told me these went up. And mob play here for about 600 600 uh, lightly plates are about 1250s. These were about a thousand, maybe 1100 ish. So the lightly plates have gone up. The near mints, though, are about 2100. Uh, but that's from, you know, 641, 98.3, right? Ugh. <clears throat> I can't really say that's the near mint price. <clears throat> but if you want a ghost for a Black Rose Dragon, you're paying quite a fortune for your first of lightly plates. Alright, and we're going to end things with Burst of Destiny. If you guys enjoyed this Mark Watch, just make sure to smash that like button as well. If you're not subscribed, hopefully today's day in your subscription. And remember, before the video ends, make sure to let me know in the comment section below what I'm looking at next Market Watch. Now, Burst of Destiny is very interesting. You have Starlight Strouds here, which, again, grab ultis. I think this price, I mean, it's dropped like crazy. So, you know, you could make some more money on the Starlight Rares, but eh, I don't know. Starlight Rares, 218. Well, I do know. Do not pick up Starlight Rares. Pick up all these. But, two, but if you get a deal on one of these Starlight Rares, that's different. 218 for the Live Twin Trouble Sunny, which is very odd because this card is so good. It's such your, it's a, your bread and butter, essentially. So, a little confused. Chiaxu, I mean, you have a first dead near mint here from a new seller at about 138. Uh, but if you don't want to trust that 175, if this is true, 140 for this Starlight Rare is actually quite good. I'm shocked that the uh, Sword Soul Starlight can't even reach 200, personally. Uh, DPs, we already went over. The Flundery Starlight Rare is garbage. Uh, sealed Boxes. Now, I, w I just want to say, as DP goes up, people are... And, you know, Sword Soul becomes, you know, a little... You know, not our... You know, it's still meta-relevant, but it's not of our recent set. You know, we get our next core set. $70, we up to 72 These Sealed Boxes are actually quite good. Now... Your Ecclesias at 60 are good to grab. Uh, your Soul to Soar Mohis, you have first endearment here for 34. But after that, they kind of go up to about 36 here. Uh, quickly go up to like, four, basically it's going up to about 40 bucks uh, right over here. So you want to grab your cheaper copies at 33. Not a bad idea, actually. Uh, Small Worlds at about... Man, I kind of hate how I have to click every one of these cards. $30 here for your Small Worlds. I mean, the card's good. What could I say? Uh, this set was just so good. Really def made more decks viable, especially with Small World. You know, gave us the brand and stuff. Now, Lord of Heavenly Prison. I actually picked one of these up recently. $24 going up to... Going up to 28 Going up to 29 Not too bad for your Heavenly Prison. Again, I think that's an amazing card you guys should go grab. I told you guys to grab them at 18. If you did, you made quite a bit of money here. Uh, ten dollars for the you know Emporium here. These are around eight dollars, so not too bad. Maps are about our maps finally kind of going up a little bit here. Eh, six bucks. You know, we you know, went up a dollar. That's cool. Six six and a half. That's not terrible. Uh, you know, it's a six dollar ultra. What can you do? Uh, Sword Soul Emergence here about seven eight dollars here. Uh, threes for Tremoras, twos for Ultra Sunnies. That's not too bad for Sunny, honestly. I've actually seen Evil Twin in action. The deck is actually not that bad. Two dollars, dollar fifty, two dollars, about like a dollar fifty, two dollars, two dollars, dollar, the dollar for this somehow, fifty cents. This produces a token, so I would watch how this card goes. Uh, personally, you might want to look at it. And, you know, see how it is. Might not be a bad card to have. But, that is all for the Mark Watch. Make sure you guys smash that like button. Again, I hope the coughing was not too bad. I am a little sick. So, if you want to wish me well in the comment section below, that would be great. Uh, might actually end up going to a doctor soon, actually. Um, I have to talk a few th about a few things. I've uh, been having some uh, issues in the morning, you know. And, it's a little bit weird. Nothing, nothing like, war too worrisome. But, I have allergies. And, I've always had bad allergies. And it is the winter, so if you guys actually don't know, um, 
when you have bad allergies, uh, like me, sometimes you get a little bit more nosebleeds. Maybe not full on nosebleeds, but like you'll blow your nose and your snot will have a little bit of blood in it. And that's been happening way more often than any other winter. Uh, granted, it is very cold outside, but you know, the amount and everything's a little weird. Uh, that along with, if you guys no, didn't know, I actually did end up getting the tribe infecting virus. I'm going to use the nice word here uh, so I don't get demonetized. Um, I ended up catching it, and, what you know, I actually, it ended up not being that bad for me, actually. Um, it's just, I have, like, leftover mucus, and I just have a cough, right? I've tested negative now, so it's all good, but it's a little cough because of the mucus, which is, you know, quite odd. But I'm still taking things carefully, even though it's, you know, it's been past the 40 days. Uh, but I'm a little sick, might last a little while, so I apologize about that, guys. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to smash that like button if you did. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.